Hello everyone and welcome to uh, part 2 of uh, the series uh, of uh, controlling electronics with the Commodore 64. Uh, thanks for watching Ovesen.net. In episode 1 I showed you how to make a cable to connect to the user port of the Commodore 64 and I made a, a connector with uh, all the different uh, wires that are needed to communicate with the parallel uh, communication of the Commodore 64. I also showed how you can connect a, a LED or light emitting diode to the user port's uh, 5 volts output. But just turning on an LED is not uh, much fun. I want to do more than that. And uh, the next thing I want to do is to uh, be able to control it on and off from the computer. In order to turn something on or off, we need to use the data lines from the user port. And uh, this is data line four. Um, and as you can see, when I measure the voltage between uh, ground and uh, this uh, output line, it is, uh, in fact, if I turn on the computer, <laughs> it is, in fact, uh, 5 uh, volts. So um, that means uh, there is a, a positive signal on this line right now. No, even if there is a 5 volt on this uh, data line, uh, that's not enough current to drive uh, uh, some electronics like a LED. So in order to drive an LED, we have to use some kind of switch and let this uh, data line uh, control the switch instead of powering uh, the LED directly. So let's take a look at the electronic circuit that we have. We have the plus 5 volts uh, here and uh, we have the LED and then we have the 330 ohm resistor that is connected to minus or ground. So in order to control this LED on and off, we need to create a switch here. And this switch uh, we need to control by uh, connecting the uh, C64 uh, data line. So what we really need is to switch on a strong signal with a weaker signal. And for that we can use a transistor. And a transistor... Uh, is actually a, a device that can act as a switch. I'll draw the symbol for it here. So this is uh, one example of a transistor and if we connect it to 5 volts and uh, then this leg to ground Then we can turn this switch on by putting voltage on uh, this connection point here, which is called the base. By putting uh, 5 volt on this point here, this connection here on the transistor, it starts to flow uh, electricity through the transistor from uh, 5 volt to ground. No, I'm not an uh, electronics expert, so I explain things as I understand it and how I did learn some basic electronics uh, before at uh, college, so um, some things I know. So let's draw the new circuit uh, with the switch. So here comes the transistor. which is then connected to the 
resistor, five, uh, 330 ohms, and then the LED, and down to ground. You have to excuse my uh, drawing skills, uh, however, to be able to switch this transistor on and off, we need to supply some voltage and uh, we can uh, either directly from the 5 volt supply voltage and turn the, the LED on and off, but uh, that's not what we want and that's no good reason to do that, then we could just uh, connect directly. What we want to do is to, to uh, connect this to the uh, Commodore. So back to our uh, actual circuit and here I have uh, one transistor, it's an NPN type and these are very cheap, you can buy them uh, in the hundreds for cheap from uh, China. So let's place it beside the resistor like this. The transistor has three legs. First leg is the collector where we supply our 5 volt uh, power. The middle pin is the base, it's where we turn the transistor on and off. And the third leg is the emitter, it's where we let the current out to the rest of our circuit. So let's connect the emitter side of the transistor to the resistor with a small jumper wire. And then we can uh, supply the 5 volt to the collector, which is the first pin. And then the ground down to the ground rail on the breadboard. So when I turn on the computer now, I expect the LED to not turn off on because uh, the transistor is off. And uh, actually that is correct. And if I now take the data line from the user port of the Commodore and connect it to the uh, base of the transistor, I expect the LED to turn on because this uh, wire here has 5 volts. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened. So now we have a circuit where we can control the LED by turning on and off this data line from the computer. Okay, now it's time to uh, write some code to try to uh, control uh, the LED from the computer. So the user port is controlled by the CIA chip in the computer and the CIA chip can be controlled by uh, poking uh, different memory addresses uh, on the computer and uh, if you look at the manual for the Commodore 64 or Google a bit you find that uh, to set the input or output mode of uh, the CIA chip uh, uh, the parallel lines, then you can manipulate the address uh, DD03, uh, which in uh, decimal is 56579. Uh, and then to turn on the or off the different data lanes, you can uh, manipulate the address DD01, which is uh, decimal 56577. So let's take a look at the memory, memory address DD03 to find out which uh, mode the parallel lines are in. So we can uh, write a little statement here and peek the address uh, 56, 57, 9. 
and it uh, result in uh, zero. No, a value of zero indicates that all the eight uh, data lines are configured as input. However, we want to configure those as output, so we set the value at uh, 56, 57, 9 to 255, which means uh, all ones. As you can see, the LED is now off, and I want to turn it on by uh, poking uh, the correct uh, data line. So to do that, I want to uh, use the address DD01, and first I take a look at the value. Uh, the value that's already on that pin. And it is zero, that means that all the data lines are at zero um, volts and uh, are off. So now let's uh, try to turn on the first data line, which is data line zero, by poking the address. And the first bit of the address would be the first data line that means we have to turn the first bit on and the value is a one so let's uh, hold up the breadboard and see what happens when i press enter all right led turned on now let's try and turn it off again by putting in a zero. Okay, that's excellent. So we actually managed to control uh, the electronics and the LED uh, by programming the Condor 64. So next step is to uh, turn the LED on and off uh, in a sequence uh, like a blinking and I wrote a small program in BASIC to do that and um, uh, let's test it uh, and see what happens all right it's blinking and it's uh, writing on and off on the screen Now this program is quite simple. The first line is uh, just telling the, all the data lines to be uh, configured for uh, output. Then it uh, turns uh, line one uh, or line zero if you want on and prints on and then it loops for a while just uh, to make a little delay. And then it sets the line zero to zero which is off and then waits uh, again and then it repeats itself what's fun with uh, only turning on and off uh, one led <laughs> i extended my circuit now with uh, eight leds and uh, eight transistors um, because i want to be able to uh, control a whole byte of uh, input uh, to this circuit so um, and now i'm able to do that and i uh, can turn on a single LED by adding a few wires like this uh, eight transistor might seem a lot uh, and you can of course get uh, an integrated circuit or something instead um, but uh, for now I'm using eight transistors also, now I'm using an external uh, power supply. It's uh, just a regular 5 volt USB power supply that I have uh, uh, put uh, these uh, crocodile uh, clamps on. And the reason for using a, an external uh, power supply is that the Commodore and the CIA chip can only provide a maximum of 100 milliamps. 
and with the eight LEDs and transistors we are starting to reach that limit so I don't want to risk uh, overloading uh, the Commodore. So let's try to connect to the circuit from the Commodore and see if we can control all the LEDs. Now when using an external uh, power supply to be able to send a signal from the Commodore we need to have a common ground so I connect uh, the ground wire from the Commodore, the U support, to the ground rail on my breadboard. So I hooked up the line uh, zero and then I connect all the other seven uh, uh, parallel lines. And uh, all of those goes to the uh, base of the transistor. It's a little bit fiddly with all uh, these wires, but uh, luckily I have them uh, marked, so. I hooked up all eight lines, and uh, if I'm uh, correct, then all the, all the LEDs will be turned on when I turn on the machine, because uh, all the lines are configured as input and are hold, uh, they are held high initially. Yeah, and as you can see, my assumption was correct. Uh, all the LEDs are lit. So let's make a program to control each indi individual uh, LED. Now I made a small program and I'll go through it here. First line uh, is just a comment. Uh, line 20 is to set all the pins for output. And uh, then on line 25, I turn all the pins uh, off. And then I loop through one, uh, sorry, through zero to 255. And then I call the poke command to put the value i onto the pins. Uh, and then I have a, on line 50 a loop uh, that waits for a little while. And then it uh, iterates through the first loop with the i. So this program should turn all the LEDs on like a 8-bit number from 0 to 255. So let's run it and see. All right, seems to be working. All right, having fun, uh, I modified the program to turn uh, the LEDs on in a sequence and uh, the values on the screen and here's the program <laughs> sorry here is the program it's a little bit longer but it counts up uh, each bit uh, in a for loop and uh, down again in uh, another for loop that um, counts downwards